Hello, I'm Bill Berg. It gives me great pleasure to invite you to join me in a live presentation of The Power of Perseverance by Mike Wickett. Perseverance, that's a long word, and perhaps aptly so. Most people who persevered on the path to a goal will attest that the journey is long and arduous, that it takes time, toil, and sometimes tears before the goal can be attained. But many of these people also believe that the tough times made them stronger and more resilient. They discovered talents they'd never known they possessed. They acquired strength of spirit, and their ultimate success underscores the power of perseverance. Mike Wickett is one of them. Born into an alcoholic family, he overcame poverty, low self-esteem, early failures, and negativity to become one of this country's foremost business trainers and seminar leaders. Acknowledging that it was his dogged perseverance that made his rags-to-riches life possible, Mike has made it his life's mission to motivate others to realize their dreams. As president of Mike Wickett Enterprises, a public speaking and business consulting firm in Birmingham, Michigan, Mike's clients include many Fortune 500 companies, large associations, and religious groups. He's produced films for the automotive and communications industries. He's also the author of two other Nightingale Conant audio cassette programs, It's All Within Your Reach and The Power of Communication and Persuasion. This audio program, The Power of Perseverance, provides you the blueprint for designing your own successful life. Action steps and inspiration, examples and motivation, you'll get them all in this program. And now let's join Mike Wickett in a live presentation as he shares with you the power of perseverance. Thank you. I'm looking out at almost a thousand architects. You have any idea why I said that? Because you're an architect. What are you the architect of? Your life. And I'm the architect of my life and we all design it. We design it with the kind of quality we decide to put in it. We design it by the feelings that we choose to have every single day, and then those feelings tend to impact on the results. We're here to design the best year we've ever had in our life, right? right. My purpose in being with you is to give you ideas that I feel are valuable and to support you in getting everything you want from life, and it is up to you to take an idea or two or three each week and put it into action. Tonight's about positive attitudes right where you are, regardless of what is going on. And I really believe positive attitudes make a huge difference. You know, so often in our society we hear about optimists and pessimists, kind of positioned at opposite ends of the spectrum, like one is better than another. Well, I'm not going to say it's better to be an optimist than a pessimist. I personally believe that you and I will accomplish more by being optimistic than we will by being pessimistic. However, I have discovered there may be a little bit positive about pessimism. <laughs> well, I saw some interesting advice the other day, and I want to share it with you. It says, always borrow from a pessimist. He never expects to get it back. Now, in case, in case you have wondered uh, what is the difference between an optimist and a pessimist, well, Chancey Depew said this. He said that a pessimist is a man who thinks all women are bad. An optimist is a man who hopes they are. <laughs> That's a new speechwriter. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> a pessimist is a man who, faced with the choice of two evils, chooses both. <laughs> Tonight is really about finding the positives right where we are. And if you were to say to me, Mike, I've got problems and I'm burdened and I'm kind of stuck, what can I do to change my life? I would say to you, change your energy. Find some positives, find some optimism, find some good right where you are and that can change your life. Mohammed and Sudano Elu of Meale, Kenya were asked what they thought about old age and they just laughed. All this nonsense about our ages is so much modern rubbish, Mohammed replied. He's 100, she's 24. <laughs> they were recently married. 
and they're very excited about their future. He said, we are ecstatically happy. And she agreed, I'm so lucky to have such a husband. He's so kind to me. And they're looking forward to raising a family. That's optimism. <laughs> and I believe that regardless of what has happened to you and me, we can find something positive and something good right where we are. And in the finding of something positive, you will expand and improve your life. Look at poor Zsa, Zsa Gabor. She's never been able to make a marriage work. And she has had one after another that fell apart. And yet, Zsa, Zsa is still an optimist because despite all the failed relationships, she still manages to find something positive about herself. Zsa, Zsa recently said, I am a marvelous housekeeper. Every time I leave a man, I keep his house. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So tonight, let you and I find more and more positives right where we are. And if you have difficulties and challenges and burden, that is the fastest way out of them that I know. So repeat after me. Say, beginning today, beginning today I'm looking for the positives. For See, there's a great value to finding positives because there's a principle in life that says whatever you focus your energy on expands. You get more of. Classic case. Somebody who's got financial problems, what do they always focus their energy on? Their debts. What does that create more of? More debts. Somebody who's got positive cash flow, always focus on positive cash flow. That's called the rich get because it expands. Remember the great... Aerialist Carl Walenda of the Flying Walendas. They used to do the pyramid many years ago. He fell to his death in 1978. His wife later recalled that all Carl thought about for the three months prior to his death was not falling. And she said it was the first time in all those years he had ever focused on not falling. She said he seemed to put all of his energy into the fear of falling rather than walking the tightrope. What are you putting your energy into? What are you focusing on? Do you realize that what you focus on is what your mind will produce more of for you? So tonight we're going to look at finding the positives right where we are. W. Clement Stone, one of America's richest men, began his career in the streets of Detroit selling newspapers at the age of 14, branched off into insurance, developed an interesting viewpoint about life as a young man that he believes has been responsible for all the success he's enjoyed. But every time something fell apart, his response would be two words. What did he say? Yes, sir. That's good. And then he would set about finding something good or something positive in the situation, and he almost always did. And W. Clement Stone says he believes that habit developed many years ago of finding the good, looking for the positives, has been responsible for turning his obstacles into a very successful life. So today, despite any problems you have or any difficulties you have, Let's focus on, uh, begins with a P. Positive. Let's find some good right where we are. I promise you it can change your life. This young man named Randy Waters, who as a senior in high school was an outstanding athlete. He was a defensive back on the football team, intercepted four passes. As the punter, he averaged over 40 yards a kick. In addition to that, he played number one singles and number one doubles on the tennis team. Now, the thing that makes it significant is Randy only had one arm. Several years earlier, he had a summer job at a meatpacking plant. His hand got caught in a meat grinder. In one horrifying second, he was pulled in. He lost his entire arm. He was rushed to the hospital, put in intensive care. It wasn't until a couple days later they knew he'd survive. Eventually, the coach and his teammates went to visit him with great trepidation. They walked into the hospital room not knowing what they were going to say to cheer Randy up. They were shocked to see him sitting up in bed, smiling and saying, Hi, coach. Hi, guys. How are you? They just couldn't believe what great spirits he was in. The coach said, Randy, you look great, kid. I'm glad you're okay. I'm sorry that you can't play for us again. He said, No, coach. I'm going to play again. I'm coming back. Coach said, But Randy, you've lost your arm. Be realistic. Your athletic career is over. He said, it's not over, coach. He said, I'm coming back. I promise. Coach said, but, but Randy, how can you be so positive considering what has happened to you? 
He said, Coach, my dad gave me some advice, and I've been thinking about it constantly, and I know it's the truth. So, Coach, I'm coming back. He said, what kind of advice did your dad give you? He said, when I woke up from surgery, my father whispered two sentences into my ear, and here's what he said. He said, Randy, don't worry about what you've lost. Just concentrate on what you've got left. And so Randy Waters did. He focused on his good arm, he focused on his natural talents and abilities, and he went on to become an outstanding athlete on the football team and the tennis teams in his senior year. How many have ever lost anything? How many have had some things fall apart? Why don't you take the advice of his father? Forget about what you've lost and concentrate on what? Focus on what you got left. Find something positive right where you are. Because I promise you, in the midst of every situation, there is an opportunity. I'll bet you that every person that is here tonight, we must have, I don't know, 12, 13, 1400, I'll bet most of the people had something tragic or devastating happen to them. How many of you ever had anything like that happen? Wouldn't it be easy to quit? Wouldn't it be easy to throw in the towel? Is that what you're going to do? No. Or are you going to look for something that begins with a P? I was in the restaurant last Saturday, and I've got like five programs coming up in the next six days, so I was having lunch and outlining a lot of things, and I really love to create sessions and material. I, I just found out I love to find the, the pieces that fit together. And there was a, a gal over there who was one of the hostesses, waitresses, and she kind of looked at me, and she kind of looked at me, and she kind of looked at me, and she said, can I come over? And I said, well, sure, come on over. She said, Mr. Wicked, I've always wanted to talk to you. She said, I'm really nervous. I said, so am I. Sit down. <laughs> And she said, I want to thank you for what you did for me. You really inspired me. I said, what did I do? She said, well, you helped me to really turn my life around. She said, uh, when I was 13, I got hooked on booze. And when I was 15, it escalated to coke and drugs. She said, I was very unhappy. And she said, I was a people pleaser. I was trying to please my folks. And I was trying to please my friends. And I was trying to fit in with the crowd, trying to please my boyfriend. And she said, I was just torn. I was so unhappy. She said, one weekend I overdid it. I went into a coma on a Friday night for the whole weekend. And my girlfriend was afraid to call the police, so she didn't do anything. She said, fortunately, by Sunday afternoon, I came out of the coma on my own. My parents heard about it, and they immediately got me to a therapist. Her name was Joyce. She was just wonderful, and she really helped me to begin to think positive. She helped me to stop focusing on the past and problems and start focusing on the good. The first thing she did was... She helped Molly to focus on what was right about her parents, what was positive about her parents. I wonder how many people we got here tonight that are still blaming one or both parents for what they did or didn't do. Nod your head if you've ever resented one or both parents. <laughs> well, just a room full of resentment, that's all. <laughs> and isn't it amazing? We'll resent them and say, I wonder why my life isn't gloriously happy. wonder why I don't get all the breaks just because I got a little bit of resentment I'm carrying around all day long every day. And the next thing she helped Molly to do was to focus on what was positive about herself. Because you see, in the process of being a people pleaser, which is always a losing proposition because it can't be done with everybody, she had stopped to focus on what she felt and what was right about her. So now she went back to focusing on what was good about her, which was she had a wonderful personality. People always liked her. She was a loyal friend. She was an excellent athlete in school. So she got off drugs. And she got off booze, and she came to this series of lessons and applied the principles and made up her mind she was going to have a happy life. Started to make peace with her parents. Gave up the relationship with the guy who was doing all the drugs with. Well, she's been off it for a year now. She's got a full-time job. She's in a healthy relationship, her words. And one night a week, she and her boyfriend volunteer in the narcotics helpline to support other people in getting off the addiction. Now right in the midst of a very desperate situation. She found something begins with a P. Positive. How about you? I know some of us have problems and challenges and difficulties and obstacles. Are you focusing on them? Are you singing the blues? Are you having regular pity parties? <laughs> they can be fun, you know. Eliciting all that sympathy. How many have ever been to a pity party? 
<laughs> How many have been to more than one? <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with having a pity party, but guess what? You're going to have more to feel bad about. Let me suggest we give those up because it won't help us have a quality life. That's the only reason. And let me suggest that if you have had difficult or tragic or bad things happen to you, not always easy to handle, let me suggest that you leave it there and get on with your life by finding something positive in the midst of that. Find something good about that, like Molly did. The people that go the farthest in life are the ones that turn those difficult situations into something positive. You see, it's not about what happens to you. It's always about what you do with what happens to you and how you react to what happens to you. There hardly breathes a person who has not been disappointed in a relationship or disappointed in a career or had some, some unexpected uh, tragedy happen to them. Just about everybody has some of that. It seems to be a part of Earth. It's not that we have to experience it, but it just seems to be on the planet a lot. But somewhere along the way, if we're going to have our life work and if we're going to create this successful life with all this happiness and joy and fun and, and more and more and more and more, and more hugs, how many of you are ready for that? <laughs> then we want to give up the pity parties and the poor me and we want to focus on the what? Positives. Positives. People that study communication styles will tell you we basically do not communicate with words. Words are secondary source of communication. We communicate with feelings. We communicate with the whole world with the feelings we carry around with us. Now picture you and me mad because we got a bad break. What our former spouse did to us. What our mother didn't do to us. And we're getting up in the morning and we're looking at their picture and throwing darts at it and we're going out of the house, right? We've written all these goals on a sheet of paper. I want to conquer the world. I want 10 million, Kim Novak. Gary Grant, he's gone, replaced with a... Right, we've got all these lofty goals and dreams. We're walking out of the house mad, angry, upset. Now think about what that can attract. Pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> and, you know, probably the single most amazing thing about us as human beings is sometimes for years at a time we run around like unconscious program robots. <laughs> Hope my life will get better. <laughs> Hope it'll get better. Hope. And we lose sight of the fact, or maybe we never knew, that we are attracting the people that get into our life and we're attracting the kind of treatment we get from them. Can you now see the value of being an optimist? Because if you and I are walking around feeling good, looking for the positives, even though we got problems, when we're feeling those positives and looking for the good, we can attract wonderful situations and opportunities. Pretty soon you won't have any problems left. That is what I feel is the major value of being an optimistic person because you and I are walking magnets all the time. So let's stop being unconscious, my beautiful friends. Let's give up being unconscious. It's not a bad thing, but if you and I stay unconscious, what'll happen to our circumstances? They'll stay the same. How many of you don't want them to stay the same? Okay. So if life isn't a happy, dynamic experience for you, then let's decide that the only way to make that is to create some energy, right? As in some new energy. And let's start finding some positives and some good right where we are. And let's start finding more positives in our situations and in our relationships. See, life was designed to work. We screw it up. The greatest problem you have is your greatest opportunity. Absolutely true. If you find what is there for you. I've got a friend named Darren Powers. Is that a great name? It's not a great name? Terrific name. As in daring to be powerful? Yeah. Say, yay, Darren. Yay, Darren. <laughs> and I called him up the other night, and I said, let me ask you a question. I said, I'm going to do a session on focusing on the positives. I said, have you ever had a time in your life where you had a really unpleasant or unfortunate situation that you changed into something good by focusing on the positives? Without hesitation, he said, yeah. He said, I had a situation that was life-changing. I said, could we talk? He said, just a minute, I just came in. I'll put down my coat. He left the phone. He came back. He said, yeah. He said, 1977 absolutely changed my life. I said, please tell me about it. He said, well, I was married at the time, and uh, we were living in a little, little house in Ann Arbor. And I said, well, define little. He said, 700 square feet. I said, that's little. <laughs> and he started studying prosperity principles, reading Catherine Ponder's books, and they're excellent making prosperity affirmations, really getting excited about these principles. He just loved them. 
Not too much was happening on the outside, so to speak. Still had the little house and a sofa that was worn through, but he just, he loved these ideas. And a relatively famous prosperity teacher named Leonard Orr came to town, and Darren made a connection with him and said, any suggestions on what I might do? I'm really loving the principles, but they haven't come alive for me yet. I feel it, but it hasn't quite happened. And Leonard Orr said, yes. He said, create a little prosperity workshop, share them with other people, and support other people in their prosperity, and then you will get more. He thought that was a wonderful idea. So he started a prosperity workshop in his living room for six people. And he had it for several weeks. And people were very excited about it, all except one guy. His name was Jim. He was a diesel mechanic. And as they went through the weeks, he seemed to be very quiet and very skeptical. The last session he came in, he was all excited. He said to Darren, these principles are changing my life. I'm going to really start doing what I love. What they didn't know was he had a degree in journalism, had always wanted to write, had never done anything with it, and so he got inspired to do it. Darren said, that's wonderful, and he said, I'd like to interview you and write an article about you. Darren was elated. He was going to get all this publicity for being a great prosperity teacher. <laughs> so Jim came over one day and interviewed him in a beautiful uh, day out in the backyard, and Ask him all kinds of questions. One of the questions he asked him was, he said, hey, if you're so sold on these prosperity principles, how come you're so poor? <laughs> and Darren thought that was a fair question, and he, on he answered honestly and said, well, I'm really working on expanding my consciousness, and I'm starting to see changes. And so they left it at that. He couldn't wait for the article to come out, all of his friends and associates in the community to read it, very popular paper. And he came home one day and his wife said, got the article? He said, yeah. She said, you better sit down. <laughs> she said, I'm not sure you're going to like this. But there was his picture. He looked like a huckster. They left out the word prosperity. The title of the article was How to Get Rich. They portrayed him as a con man, a scam artist. The article was devastating. It was exceptionally critical. And he read and he be his heart just sunk and he felt worse and he felt worse, and he felt worse. He just was devastated. He could not believe all this criticism, all this negativity. He thought, how embarrassing. My friends are going to read this. People over the community are going to read this. My picture is in there. My name is in there. How am I going to build a career? And then all of a sudden, he said, wait a minute. He said to his wife, Marilyn, get a marker. I'm going to find something positive in this article. I'm going to find something positive right now. Get a marker. We're going to highlight anything we can find that's positive in this article. He stood up and he said, I'm not going to wallow for 10 seconds in this misery. So they went through and they could only find a couple of things, but they started to highlight them. And when they were done, he turned to his wife and he said, you know what? He said, I'm responsible for that. He said, that is totally my responsibility. He said, I'm responsible because I did not communicate to him effectively what I was all about and what I was trying to do and what my message was. Isn't that interesting that in the midst of a miserable situation, he took responsibility? See, he remembered that life is our mirror. He remembered that the slander quote in the article was a mirror reflection of something inside of him. He didn't get involved in putting anybody down, but he took what? You know what he said? He said, never again will I fail to communicate my message. He said, I'm going to learn to be a superb communicator. He immediately called Dale Carnegie and enrolled, started taking a class, then became an assistant, became an instructor, went to work full time, selling the course, teaching the course, managing a whole group of people that sell and teach the course. Today, Darren is one of the most successful people in the largest Dale Carnegie franchise in the world. Is he a superb communicator? No, he's a superlative one. He is one of the most powerful people that I know. He moves boldly on out into life. He loves his life. He loves his work. He loves his wife and his children. He is a super communicator. He is a great support person and a great friend. Now, what happened? He had a devastating situation. How many of you could understand if someone in that situation would get very angry at the guy who wrote it? <laughs> How many of you could understand if in that situation somebody carried that anger around for years and years and years and years? What would that have done to the quality of his life if he had done that? It would have ruined it. Thank you. It would have ruined it. And all that anger and resentment is like a kind of emotional poison. Remember, you and I carry the quality of our life around with us, don't we? Yes. Say, I carry the quality of my life, I carry the quality of my life around, with me. around with me. 
That is the value of focusing on the positives. So right in the midst of that mess, of that devastating experience, he found something, begins with a P. Positive. How about you? How about you? You willing to give up the pity parties for all time? Yes. Repeat after me, say bye-bye pity parties. Bye.